Hi, this is Kai from Kikai Craft, and it is a new pen day. Du -du -du -du. So after all the inks that we have been playing with, I'd like to share a pen that I recently got. Now, I've been waiting for this pen because Esther Brooks are a little, um, uh, it takes some time for Esther Brooks to arrive our way here in Jakarta and so I rarely get one but this time I got one that I super like. It's been out for a few months now um, but I decided to get it like a few months ago and it just arrived and so I would like to share it with you. This is the Esther Brooke Model J and first off I have to say the packaging is fantastic. Look at that. It's very vintagey and it's very sweet. Like this is one of those packages that you don't throw away. Oh, by the way, it's an extra fluffy cat hair day because Freya, one of my cats, is just like very cuddly and you might see her in a little while if she decides to join me. So anyway, this box, right, comes in this very vintage color. It says uh, R. Esther Brook and co american steel pens and it has like the address and it has the logo which you will see on the pen itself um tells you when it was established and at the back it says caution the first steel pens manufactured in america were made by richard esterbrook in 1858 esterbrook pens of the superior quality that has made the company thus founded one of the great pen producers of the world are packed only in the sealed boxes like this bearing this original signature and it has a signature and that's how it looks and it says america's original reborn and really 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 nice um so it tells you exactly what i got right there and when you pull it, it, has this nice little tab. When you pull it, you see this very pretty textured Esterbrook box. You hear that? Yeah, very nice and textured. Ooh, case made in China. Okay, so the pen is American, but the case is from China. And when you pull this, ta-da, you get to see this pretty pen. Oh, and it comes with a few other things. Nothing else there. But uh, the pen comes with a few things. First off, it comes with a nice little um, envelope and it has some information about activation and all of that. But I just want to show you, if I can, this part of it. Okay, it apparently is a secret that does not want to be shared. Okay, I, I can't take it out. Oh, why can't I take it out? Okay, it has some activation thing inside. Okay, I'm just gonna let you see. So that's how it looks inside. Huh, kind of worked the other day for me. And then it has this little card that says, it's a scribe nib by JJ Lax Pen Co. Uh, from Brooklyn, New York. And here it has some information on the modified architect on broad nib, which is the scribe nib. It's a special customized nib from Esterbrook. They have this scribe nib, then they have the journaler, then they have the needle point, and the newest one is a techo one. Okay, so without further ado, the Model J Antique Rose. So I first fell in love with Esterbrook because of the Novu Blue, which is pretty. And then I saw this particular model come out with this beautiful pattern on it. And I knew it was something I wanted to have in my collection. Look at that. It has the Esterbrook finial. Nice. Okay, so this is how it looks. Um, the body is ebonite. And I don't know if you can see it. But the band, that broad band, is uh, very, very lightly textured. But it looks like a hammer kind of texture going for it. Very nice. And if you can see the ebonite body has these like swirls and yeah it's like grain like wood grain and as i showed earlier it has this on top lovely esterbrook and ooh, actually i haven't seen this before but a very very pretty swirl at the bottom too 
I hope you guys get to see that. Um, then when you screw it off, because it is a screw cap, there's like some some something you hear when you do that because of its uh, like a seal cap inside, right? Then you see this pretty nib. This has been inked with the Ferris Wheel Press Song of Scarlet because I thought it would be a great match and it is. Um, so you can see a little bit of the red on the uh, nib already, but this is how it looks. The section is a, um, ebonite too. And the nib itself, it has the word scribe. Let me see if I can scoot you in just a little bit. If you can see, it has the word scribe in it there and the Esterbrook logo right there. Huh, very nice. Okay, let me scoot you out so you can see a little bit more of it. So um, it was a little smaller than I thought it would be but it works. It is a cartridge converter. Oh, and I don't post, so you won't see me posting. It's a cartridge converter and it comes with a cartridge. Oh, the shimmer is like, okay. It comes with a cartridge and, uh, sorry, it comes with a converter and it comes with a cartridge as well. I rarely use the cartridges my pens come with. The barrel of this pen has the Esterbrook logo on it too, which makes it very like vintagey feel. It gives it a very vintagey feel. The box has a, a false bottom, but there's nothing inside except this super pretty logo. Okay, so let's put this away because I want to first show you how the size compares or the length compares how the pen's length compares with other pens in case you were wondering. Um, I know that every time I purchase a pen, I do read the uh, dimensions on the website and I do get a ruler and I try to measure it against my other pens and try to get a feel of it, but sometimes a little bit of visual also helps. So I hope this helps those who still wanna have a visual of how the Model J compares with other more uh, commonly seen pens in collections. So I've put together the uh, Esterbrook ST. Um, this is the regular uh, size. And then I have the Twisby Diamond 580, the Lamy. Um, and then I have the Kasama pen. If anyone owns one, at least you know, you'll, you'll see it against the Kasama pen too. Then you have your Sailor Pro Gear. Um, yeah, Sailor Pro Gear, and then you have your Jinhao 82, which I've seen quite a lot of people own. And then, of course, you have your very ubiquitous Caveco. So if I were to put them all against each other, capped, you will see, oops, that this falls right, right there. So it's a tiny bit shorter than your Lamy. It's about the same size as a Kasama, and it's a tiny bit longer than your Sailor Pro Gear. Um, then, if I were to uncap it, which I will do right now so you see. All right, after uncapping it, you will see that it is quite near the size of an SD regular in length. Um, and it's definitely shorter than the Lamy and the Diamond 580 uncapped. And it is longer than the Sailor Pro Gear. This is not the Sailor Pro Gear Slim, okay? It's the Sailor Pro Gear. And Jinhao 82 is also much shorter than this. Now the Caveco, as we all know, is going to be definitely shorter because it's a pocket pen, but it's a magical pocket pen. So if you cap, or sorry, post your Caveco, it'll be longer than your Esterbrook Model J. Okay, so let me try and put these away for you. 
and then we'll talk a little bit about the scribe nib. Okay, so basically what I've been doing really um, is that I have been enjoying the Esterbrook pens. And what I've been enjoying most, apart from the very pretty uh, patterns that they have chosen for their pens, are the different nibs that they have been offering. These are the, um, the custom nibs. And they have uh, four, like what I mentioned earlier. They have the needlepoint, the scribe, the journaler and uh, the new techo. This is apart from the usual offerings of like fine, extra fine, um, medium, and broad. I'm not sure if they have the double broad. Um, so yeah, so my plan is just to have a collection of all their nibs so I can try and enjoy them. And when I go on pen meets, I can go and maybe share the uh, experience with other people as well. So the first one I got was uh, the journaler nib and the second one I got was with the scribe nib. So the journaler nib is basically like a... Um, okay, I have it written somewhere. Hold up so I can remember. So the journaler nib, I have like a little cheat sheet where I put in all the information about my pens. Um, and so the journaler nib is by uh, Jenna, Gina Salorino, and it is a medium stub grind. This is her, her own words. A medium stub grind based on the vintage Esterbrook 9314M nib. All right. And when it writes, I just have to say it's such a beautiful writer. It's currently inked with Mont Blanc Mystery Black. And I'm using some tracing paper. I'm going to scoot you in a little closer. All right. So as I mentioned, it's currently inked with the Mont Blanc Mystery Black because I uh, wanted to use black for a bit. So this is the, oops, journaler nip. And basically, it has thick downstrokes and thin um, horizontal. So thick and thin. And if you go for the usual loops, this is how it looks. It it's actually like a medium uh, nib, but the thing with it is that it just gives your strokes the tiniest bit of flare which is just a wonderful experience and if you're like me and you sometimes uh, suffer from like shaky hands i often do this particular grind is just a wonderful piece to have in your collection i often have this particular one inked up um i used to have it with the roaring um black patina which is a shimmer ink from fairy's wheel press as well and it didn't clog up the nibs at all at first i was a little nervous and then i used it and it was all good now let's try the scribe nib which okay let me get my little cheat sheet again so the scribe nib is a special grind by josh lax and if i'm not mistaken this is basically the architect uh grind and so this is the scribe wow okay and as you can see it's quite a wet writer downstrokes are thin and horizontal strokes are quite thick so it's like the opposite of your journaler again quite a consistent looping happening um and it basically gives your writing a bit of a flare too. Hmm. It's more subtle here though. All right, let's try with the usual hello because it has a lot of like nice looping happening. 
that. So that's how it looks with the scribe nib and with the journaler. Scribe nib, stay there. Okay. And with the journaler, this is how it would look. Okay, between the two, I have to say that the journaler nib, let me scoot you out, now that's done. The journaler nib has a smoother writing experience and the scribe nib has a bit of a, like a, a feedbacky, toothy feel to it. But I don't know if it's because I have like shimmer ink onto it. But it wasn't my experience with the journaler, even when I had the boring black patina. Um, it didn't feel so scratchy at all. So I suppose it's in... Uh, it's one of the characteristics of the grind. Um, another thing <clears throat> that I did notice was that, let me just scoot that out so you can see a little bit more of, yeah, is that the scribe nib is wetter. It's a wetter writer than the journaler. The journaler sort of is, is what's this? It sort of really uh, manages the ink quite well. Um, now, both are fantastic nibs to have, but this would be more of an everyday writer and this one would be more for um, a little bit more flair in your writing. Sometimes this one also gives like the slightest, I don't know if you see it, that's very common with, a, with this nib. It gives you like a little bit of a graffiti feel to it, which I really, really enjoy. Let me see what I wrote so I can just show you. So this is what I wrote about it. And as you can see, where is it? Mm, see, there's like this little, little tiny roughness, which I really enjoy. It gives it that, you know, the very rough graffiti that you sometimes see. So it has that feel without it being too rough. It's just maybe for the, the tinkers in us who are fountain pen collectors, we see these things and we feel these things when we write with the pen. So this is how it looks with like a long piece of writing. And this is how the journaler looks. You can already see that this is like a smoother, uh, it has like straighter lines. It's more forgiving for like people with shaky hands. This is less forgiving, but it does give it a lot of character. So it really just depends on your mood for the day, I suppose, which one you'd rather get. Uh, this one has an ebonite body, which is um, quite rare to find nowadays. And this one has an acrylic body. Ooh, did I just hear them hit each other? Okay, so I'm quite happy with these two pens. I'm quite happy with my scribe and I'm very happy with my journaler and the only thing that I'm thinking of maybe getting or having in the future would be the Techo nib and then I basically have all the nibs that I'd like to get from Esterbrook and I am ready to share it with the fountain pen community here in Indonesia and maybe even when I visit the Philippines or wherever other place I go. Definitely bringing these two with me when I travel um, because I want to have that uh, I want the writing experiences to be accessible to me so that I can match my mood to my uh, nibs. Okay, so I hope that this uh, review comparison video has been helpful for all those who are maybe looking at moving from their standard nib sizes to more customized, more special nib sizes. Uh, or nib grinds and those who are thinking of either getting the journaler or the scribe. Um, I hope that this has helped you sort of uh, make up your mind as to which nib to get from Esterbrook. Okay, so this is in no way sponsored by Esterbrook. This is just me. I bought all these pens and um, I just wanted to make sure that I shared the experience back to the community because I remember when I was starting I was really watching all these videos to kind of figure out what I wanted to get next so for those who are going to move up I hope that you have found this video helpful for you 
This is Kai from Geek Eye Craft, and I hope that wherever you are, you're having a great day or a restful evening. Bye everyone.